Hey guys, welcome to Community Groups and welcome to part three of our series that we're calling Branded. And in this series, we're kind of looking at the way that our community perceives the brand of our church. What are their emotional responses when they hear the words ripple effect or they heard the, hear the words Port City Community Church or maybe for you um, when they hear that you're a Christian. We're kind of asking the question, what is our brand? And if we want to change the brand of our faith and our community, what does it look like to go about doing that? So I want to start tonight by actually reading part of a verse. Um, it comes from the book of John. Um, and for those of you guys who may not know, John, uh, the book of John is actually... Um, John wrote it. A guy named John obviously wrote it, and he was one of Jesus' disciples. He was one of the ones who followed Jesus. So all the four of the Gospels, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, are actually those four men and their kind of retelling of their experience with Jesus. So this one verse comes from right before Jesus is actually going to die. Um, it's, they're in the upper room. He's there with the disciples. This is kind of the Last Supper, and he's spending some time with them, talking to the disciples before he knows that he's going to be going uh, to be crucified. And um, here's what he says to them, kind of a, some of the last little messages he wants to leave them. He says in um, verse uh, 35 of chapter 13, he says this, By this, all men will know that you're my disciples. Like He's telling them, by this one thing, everybody is going to know that you're a follower of me, that you're one of my followers. The question is, what is that one thing? What is the thing that is going to show people all around them that they were actually followers of Jesus? And that's what we're going to be answering tonight. So, you know, if I were to be asked this question when I was a kid, maybe when I was a teenager, maybe a little younger, is like, what? how do people know that you're a Christian? How do people know that you're a follower? Um, you know, that was around the time where uh, Christian t-shirts got really popular, popular. I don't know if you had one. Maybe some of your leaders had a Christian t-shirt. But basically, the idea behind the Christian t-shirt was to take um, like a famous brand and then rebrand it in a slightly different way to make it like a Christian shirt. Um, it was kind of, I think, the church's way of saying, hey, you guys are funny. We're funny too. Look at our shirts. So here's some examples of, of some that I found online that are pretty funny. Um, there's one that's actually, it says, Jesus died for my space in heaven. Now, you guys may not know why that's funny, but your leaders do because they used to have MySpace accounts. And uh, this one is uh, kind of ripping that idea of MySpace off. Um, another one that I think is hilarious is, um, there's, it's this one that looks like uh, the Home Depot one. It says, the Holy Spirit you can do it. He can help. Yeah, that's pretty cheesy. Um, let's see. There's uh, there's one, this one here. It's a relish, sweet Jesus relish, kind of off the Heinz. Uh, yeah, pretty stupid. Um, let's see. This one, oh, the lifeguard shirt, right? He's, a, you know, the typical red, white, like this one, light, uh, right, lifeguard shirt, and it says, uh, mine walks on water. That's pretty bad. Um, and then there's this is a this is actually one of my personal favorites. It's a bread crumb, bread crumb and fish, like Abercrombie and Fitch. That's pretty stupid. Um, but here's another thing I thought. Like when I was when I finally got a car, um, this is another thing that got really popular uh, was putting like a Jesus fish on your car. Like you guys have seen these before. Like um, my, the one that was on my car looked like this, um, and it was was cool because. It um, had the little, you see the little cross there? That's the eye. I thought that was cool. And it wasn't really big, so I put it on my car. Um, and then um, a lot of people did what this picture shows. Um, they got really creative with it, where you have like the two dad fishes and like all the like little, little, little other and mom and dad fish and other little fish and then little grandchildren fish swimming after them. Um, and then um, people who weren't Christians decided, well, they didn't, they wanted their own version of the Jesus fish. And so they created this one, which is the Darwin fish, right? The fish with the, the, the feet right? Because they believe in evolution. Um, and then Christians couldn't let them get away with that. So they created the one that you see here, which is the truth fish eating the Darwin fish, right? Um, and then somebody got really creative by creating this one, which was a dinosaur eating the truth fish, which is eating the Dar Darwin fish. But, but there are lots of things that if, you know, you ask people, what is it that kind of shows that you're a Christian? I mean, that's how maybe I would have answered it at one time that you had a Jesus fish on your car. It's, oh, they're most likely a Christian if they have that. Um, a lot of us, if we were real honest, um, that 
we would answer the question that Jesus said, or the statement, we'd finish the statement that Jesus made, which is, they'll know that you're my disciples by this, um, by maybe it's a list of things that you do. Like as a Christian, this is what you do so that people know you're a Christian. Maybe like you have to go to church on Sunday or you have to go to church on Wednesday or whatever. It, whenever the church building is open, Christians are at church. Uh, maybe for you, it's, a, it's that Christians must be evangelists and they have to stand in the hallway and they have to talk about God and they have to talk about Jesus. You have to preach in your school. Um, maybe every conversation, like you feel like a Christian, if you're a Christian, the thing you have to do is you have to talk about your faith in Christ in every single conversation that you have. So for some of us, we would answer the question, you know, what, how do people know that you're a Christian by things that we, a list of do's. For others, it's a list of don'ts. Like Christians are defined by the things that they don't do. Um, you know, there's a statement that I know that our, our senior pastor, Mike, often says, like Christians don't drink or chew or hang with those that do. But there is a list of things that if you're a Christian, you, you, do, you just don't do those. And right or wrong, there are a lot of people who think, well, you shouldn't go to R-rated movies or you shouldn't drink alcohol ever if you're a Christian or um, that Christians never watch these certain television shows or shouldn't read this kind of stuff or don't play these kind of video games. There's a long list of all these things that if you're a Christian, you just simply don't do. And then there are things, I, so there's the category that of these are things that Christians do, then there's a category of things that Christians don't do, and then for maybe for some of you, that, that what categorizes a, a somebody who's a Christian, people know that you're a Christian, maybe by the things that you're against. Like Christians are, are kind of defined by what they're against. And there's a long list of things in our culture that most people in our, commu in our community and in our culture here in the U.S. assume that Christians are against a the, this list of things that always come up every political season. And if you're against these things, or maybe if you're for certain things, those are the things that define you as a Christian. Or maybe like to, to be a Christian, you have to be Republican. Or to be a Christian, you have to be a Democrat. Now, there are some things that you're either for or against, and that is what defines you as a Christian. But that's not what Jesus said. And some of you are probably familiar with this verse, but I'm going to go ahead and finish it real quick. So remember, Jesus is in the upper room with his disciples, and he says, a new command I give you, love one another. As I have loved you, so you must love one another. By this, all men will know that you're my disciples if you love one another. The, the, what Jesus said is it has, has little to do with what you do or what you don't do or this list of do's or the list of don'ts or the things that you're for or the things that you're against. He said the people are going to know that you are my disciples, that you love me, that you're following after me by the way that you love each other. The question we're examining tonight is what does it look like? How do you interact with those who are also believers? What are, their inter what are the interactions that you have with people who are inside the circle of the body of Christ? Because Jesus said, if people will know you're my disciples by the way that you love each other. He goes on um, later on in, in, in the same book of John chapter 15, he gets even more descriptive with it. He says, as the Father has loved me, so I have loved you. Now remain in my love. If you obey my commands, you will remain in my love. So there is an aspect here. As believers, there are things that we should follow. There are a list of do's and don'ts. There are a list of things that God has kind of given us some parameters for our lives. If we follow him as disciples, that we really would be better to follow those commands. And that's actually a way to show God that we love him. But the way that we show the world that we love God is how we love each other. I hope you caught that. Because what Jesus says is the way that you show God that you love him, the way that you show me that you love me is by keeping my commands. And that's something he's telling believers, those of us that call each other Christians and call ourselves Christians. He said the way that the, that the world outside of the church knows that you're my disciples is not by a list of do's or don'ts, not by a list of things you're for or against, but it's how you love each other. He says, um, if you obey my commands, you will remain in my love, just as I have obeyed my Father's commands and remain in his love. I have told you this so that your joy may be complete, or that, that my joy may be in you and that your joy may be complete. My command is this, he says it again, love each other as I have loved you. Here's what you need to know. The bottom line for tonight is this. When we love each other, we create an environment 
that is that unbelievers simply find un irresistible. They cannot resist it. When we love each other, we create an environment that unbelievers simply cannot resist. The reason that you are sitting in a house right now, having a conversation about what it looks like to walk with Jesus, to have a relationship with Jesus, the, only, the reason you're kind of doing church right now is because the group of people that Jesus was talking to in this chapter, the disciples, started loving each other. If you read in Acts, the book right after John, and it describes the early church, and after Jesus had died and rose again and came back and revealed that he was still alive, those guys were changed. Their lives were completely changed. And Acts describes how the church grew. And the reason the church grew by numbers and numbers and numbers and people every day were becoming Christians was because of the way that they were treating each other. You're here today in a room talking about faith in Jesus because there were a group of people that took what Jesus said seriously enough to treat each other with love. And it was irresistible to people. It was irresistible to people who were judged everywhere else in their lives who didn't feel like they measured up, who didn't feel like they, they could be a part of, of the good people, the, the, good, the good church people. Well, the way that Christians treated each other created something that was irresistible to people that were rejected everywhere else. And so they became Christians because they observed the way that Christians treated each other. You know, earlier I mentioned kind of the Jesus fish, and um, that actually had its origin in the early church. See, in the early church, um, they couldn't use the sign of the cross. They didn't use the sign of the cross. Like now we use the cross as kind of a symbol of Christianity, but then they didn't because associating with the cross was too much associated with Jesus, and it was really kind of dangerous to associate yourself with, with the cross. They kind of had to keep their faith somewhat hidden in their culture because it could mean that you would be persecuted because of it. But they still wanted to be able to connect with each other. They still wanted to know who was safe to talk to. They wanted to know who else were the other Christians. Um, and so they chose this, this sim symbol to, to show safety to each other, to say like, hey, we're in community with each other and, and we're safe. In fact, there's a story that the, the Jesus fish, um, which is actually kind of based on, um, it's, it's acrostic of the Greek letters that stand for Jesus Christ, Son of God, Savior. So you, sometimes you see the fish with like those Greek letters in it. That's what it means. And the way that they would know if they were kind of in a safe place talking to someone they met on the road was when they started a conversation on the road, um, one person would kind of make the one arc of the fish with their foot in the sand. So they draw it out in the sand, just kind of one of those arcs. And if the person they were talking to created the other arc and completed the fish, they knew there was safety there. They knew that there was love. They knew that they were in a safe place. And my hope for your community group, my hope for your small group is that it is a safe place like that. That you know when you're in your group that you have a community of believers that care about you, that love you, and that want to love you in a way that helps you grow to become more and more like Christ. And when you start doing that in your community group and in your circle of friends at school, and, and, and people wonder why you guys treat each other the way you do with so much love and care and kindness, it creates an environment that is simply irresistible to unbelievers. And that is going to change the brand. The question is, how do we change the brand of faith in Christ? We change it. By, we start by fixing us. We start by fixing the way that we treat each other as believers. And when we do that, when we start loving each other the way that God loves us, we are going to create a brand and an environment that is simply irresistible to people who don't know Jesus.